the foray channel. The topic of today is struts. That's these babies here, which are one of the core components of any car's suspension. And what we are going to be doing today is, number one, I'm going to show you how to move these from your car, and number two, I'm going to show you how to safely disassemble these, which means remove the coil springs and remove the shock absorber that's inside. What we are also going to be doing is some strut forensics, which means that once I disassemble these, I'm finally going to find out what kind of coil springs and shock absorber the previous owner has installed in the car. These came with the car and they are definitely not standard units and I have to be uh, honest, I don't like them. And today I will also try and decide you know, how I'm going to improve my struts on my car and improve the handling. But first things first, let's remove them from the car. We are going to start by applying some penetrating oil to the bolts that connect your strut to your steering knuckle. Now these have been sitting in there for a while, they will not come out super easily, so penetrating oil will definitely help. Uh, you can also apply some penetrating oil to the nut that connects your outer tie rod to your knuckle, because removing your steering rack connection to your steering knuckle is a good idea, because this will enable you you know, to freely move your strut and knuckle assembly, giving you much better access to the bolts I just mentioned. Now, before you remove these bolts, take note of this little camber adjustment tab here and mark its position so you do not lose your camber adjustment while removing these bolts. Now, as I said, these bolts have been sitting in there for a while, they're pretty tight and an impact gun is very helpful in this situation. So once you get the bolt to actually move, as you can see here, what you will need to do is get a socket wrench or some other type of wrench to hold the bolt in place while you remove the nut on the other side. Once the nut is out, the bolt will of course come out pretty easily. Now this is the upper bolt and you remove the lower bolt in the same way. You, this means you can remove your steering knuckle, but before you can do that, you will need to hammer out the tab that holds your brake hose connected to your strut. Now this can, this can easily be removed with a knife and a hammer and as you can see here is the tab and once the tab has been hammered out you can simply free your brake hose, your brake line, whatever you want to call it, from your strut. Now the only other thing uh, that, that keeps your strut connected you know in the lower half you know of its position is is the sway bar endlings. Unfortunately, as you can see here, in my case, their removal was impossible because the nut would not come off and all I did was spin the bolt inside the sway bar endling. This means I had to cut it off, as you can see here, so I could, you know, remove it from the sway bar and actually, in the end, remove my entire strut. So now you can remove your steering knuckle, get it out of place, and then your entire lower half of your strut is completely free. The only other thing you have to get, you know, removed to get the strut off the car is these four bolts. And once they are unbolted, the strut will simply fall down. Okay, here we have the strut out of the car. And before I show you how to take this thing apart, I want to talk briefly about the forensics. Now, there's two interesting things I have noticed about my struts. Number two is they have an adjustment knob on top. And if you grab a set of pliers, you can twist this thing all the way to one side where it stops and then you can twist it all the way to the other side where it also stops. What this tells me is that this is definitely a dampening adjustment knob for adjusting your shocks to a softer or harder setting. Now I have no idea which particular brand and model of shock is inside, which is why I'm very curious and I'm actually hoping I have something nice like maybe Coney Yellows. Now the other thing uh, are these coil springs. I, have, I had trouble identifying them before but now that I have taken the strut of the car I managed to find a number and uh, some letters and here it says G and M. Let me show. Let me turn that around for you. It says G and M 1458VA O or zero, I have no idea. Now, after a lot of research, I managed to find the company that makes these springs. 
and it's a company called G&M from Sweden and what they basically make are some very very cheap low and lowering springs for your car. Now I did notice while I was driving my MR2 that the ride on these is extremely harsh and I have to say I don't like them. I have managed, I did not, uh, I did not manage to find them you know, on the market for the MR2 Mark 1 anymore, but I did manage to find them for some other, mostly European cars, and they are very, very cheap, definitely the bottom of the price range, which I guess is no surprise when you consider that the company is called G&M, which is honestly a very stupid marketing move. It's like calling your company BM and W or, you know, MERS and ADs, or I have no idea. Really stupid, I don't like them, so they are definitely kicking the bucket. Now, uh, let me show you how to take the struts apart. Now, to take the struts apart, you need something called spring compressors. Okay, so here we have a set of spring compressors. What these things do is you attach them to the spring, I'll show you in a moment, like this basically, and then you get your impact wrench or your socket wrench, and you twist these two things until they compress the spring. Why are you doing this? Well, there's a lot of energy stored in the spring, and if you were simply to remove the top nut of your strut without compressing the springs, there's a chance, you know, it would just pop into the air, this thing hitting you on the forehead, making a nice round imprint on your face, which the guy that would, that would be, you know, storing you in the casket would have a lot of trouble you know, removing from your face. Yeah, and I started to ramble, sorry. Now, so, let's compress the springs. As you can see now, the spring compressors have fully compressed the spring, and the spring is now close in the strut. Okay, so once you have fully compressed the spring, you can now get your impact wrench and remove the top nut. Now removing the top nut without an impact wrench is really, really hard, so I definitely recommend an impact wrench for this job. Now, once the top nut is gone, this top strut mount should basically just come off. But because my car is the king of rust, that doesn't happen. So it needs a bit of light tapping from underneath to get the top mount off. Okay, there we go. This is the top mount, it's off. Inside you have a ball bearing, and if your ball bearing is bad, these need to be replaced. Okay, next we have, look at all that disgusting rust. So this is the part, actually the perch, where the spring, the coil spring sits. And lastly, we have the coil spring itself. Here we have the dust boot, you can just pull that off. Dust boot. There was this little plastic thing. Here's some more strut forensics. Now look at the sway bar end link, and you can see here it was welded together. So what does this tell you? When they lowered the car, when they put the shorter lowering springs, the sway bar end links were too long, so what they did, they cut it in half and cut a little, you know, piece from the middle and then weld it together so they're not too long anymore. And now to get the shock out of the strut you need to remove this thing and this is a gland nut. So once you remove the gland nut just a couple more threads, there we go. Once you remove this, the shock comes right out. Well, it should at least. 
There we go. Well, would you look at that? It's yellow. But I do not see any Connie. Wait, wait, wait. There's something here. Holy crap, these are actually Connie adjustable shocks. I don't know if you can read it. Made by Connie Holland. Here's the part number and it says sport and it says adjustable. Wow. I cannot believe this honestly. I was it was just a wild guess that it was gonna be a Connie. But it actually is, and I'm super happy about this. Of course I have to check if these are any good. So far they seem pretty decent. I'm not sure, I don't know how to inspect shocks that well, so I'll have to look into that. Really happy about this. Now if these are good, I can actually reuse them, get rid of those springs, and have a very pretty suspension. So there you go guys. Uh, let me just get down some more. That's pretty much it for today. We have seen how to remove the struts, how to disassemble the struts, and we have done some forensics. Definitely some good news today. I finally have some actually decent, high-end, high-quality parts on my car. And the lame previous owner is not so lame today because all the horrible work is going to pay off if I have four good Connie adjustable shocks on my car. So, thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to share, like, comment, and subscribe. And see you soon on the D4A channel.